Well, I thought this may be an interesting uh, topic to bring up for you, too, and that is how TCC has participated in the study of asteroids. Because uh, we can do that, too. We have. Uh, some years ago, I had a project in which students were searching for asteroids. So we had this research project, and one of the first asteroids that uh, was discovered uh, uh, was uh, 2008 EB61. And we were working with uh, Patrick Miller, a professor at Abilene Christian, and he uh, was working with the Astronautical Research Institute. And so uh, we were able to get these images right here through a research telescope, and the students were analyzing, looking for moving dots. Uh, so the thing in the lower right down here, uh, the thing down here in the lower right, that is a galaxy. Uh, and then this little arrow up here is pointing to a dot. And if you look carefully in the next picture, that tiny little dot has moved. And that was the asteroid. And you'll notice from the name, 2008 EB61 tells you it was discovered in 2008. E tells you what month it is. And then B61 means it was probably pretty late in the month because uh, uh, the whole bunch of asteroids were discovered prior to that. Uh, but this asteroid was discovered, and uh, you can see that, that picture right there, and you can see that was not a very easy thing to see. Now, actually, I zoomed in on the picture right here. The picture they were looking at was actually not that zoomed in, so it gives an idea as to how hard it was. So uh, the Asteroid Search Campaign uh, at Snark uh, Research Institute, uh, uh, Bob Holmes collected the images, and then Patrick Miller sent them to us. And at TCC, we had two people, uh, Robin Kendall and Ryan Gallinger. Uh, uh, Gallinger was a student uh, there, and he was working with this to look at these asteroids. And um, um, interestingly enough, uh, neither of them were actually astronomy students, uh, but uh, they, they uh, were interested in doing this. And so uh, they, were, they were studying this, and uh, what they were looking at was actually uh, uh, using a, a computer program called Astrometrica, which was searching for asteroids and plotting known asteroids and identifying things and then looking for move, movement. And it turns out the, the computer program totally missed us. And so they were manually scanned, and both of them independently saw this. And this was the actual image they were looking at right here. So th what they were looking at was, was down in there somewhere. And so you see how hard this was. And, uh, but they actually found this thing that no one had ever found before. And so it was classified 2008 EB6. Well, uh, originally it was given a separate name that was a, a temporary name until someone else could find it. And so, so additional images were taken of that part of the sky. And someone else verified that, yes, there was something there. So a secondary discovery there. So they got credit for it, uh, 2008 EB61. And um, so originally it was designated K08E61B, uh, okay, and then uh, 2008 EB61 was the provisional designation. Uh, by 2015, it had been monitored by enough other people that it was assigned a number by the IAU, uh, 391,759. So the name of it now is... 391,759-2008-EB61. Okay. Now, they do have the option, and so far they haven't done it, but they do have the option of petitioning to the IAU to give this asteroid an actual name. Now, the IAU Commission on Names is the only uh, one that actually names things, and so um, they can they can uh, accept that petition or not, uh, uh, and and so uh, uh, but you know as, as they often are, are pretty agreeable as long as it's something reasonable. Okay, but this was not this was the first asteroid that, that other 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 students at at TCC have found several other asteroids. And uh, by the way, there, there's a uh, graphic showing where, where this asteroid is on the asteroid belt. Uh, interestingly enough, it's actually right near the edge of a Kirkwood gap. So that means at some point in the distant future, this thing could drift into the Kirkwood gap and then go flung around the solar system. Okay, so uh, the following year, uh, like a year and a half later, actually, had a, uh, uh, another student, Matt Saulberger, and he was uh, searching for uh, asteroids as well. And he found an asteroid. And it was temporarily designated 2009 UZ5. 
And so uh, this asteroid was, was uh, then studied for a little bit. And it was eventually discovered that uh, this asteroid was, in fact, another asteroid that someone else had discovered in 2005. So it was renamed 2005 WR203, which was the original name, but it was lost at that point. And so, you know, they lost track of it, and then Matt rediscovers it, and then they worked backwards the orbit and said, oh, that was that asteroid that they, they found and they lost. Okay, that's why they don't give these things names and numbers until they've been tracked for a while. So with a little bit more study, it was eventually given a number 423,635. And so uh, that asteroid is now being tracked as well. Interesting thing about this asteroid, though, is it has an exceedingly elliptical orbit and its orbit crosses that of Mars. It is actually a Mars-crossing asteroid. So uh, that, that is a particularly unusual sort of thing. So uh, that makes it a really fascinating asteroid that, that Matt found there. Uh, even, if, even though he wasn't the first one to see it, uh, he actually w did make the confirmation discovery. Next topic I'm going to be taking up is going to be comets. And so I just want to have this brief interlude there to talk about um, asteroids and, uh, and, and how TCC uh, has actually contributed in the study of asteroids. Uh, but if, if one of these objects formed in the planetesimal really far from the sun, then what happens is that it is not going to uh, get rid of all its ice. And if it dives in close to the sun, that ice is going to blow off into space and get pushed away and make a big tail. And that gives you your classic comet. So this is Comet McNaught right here from 2007. And so our next topic of study will be comets.